So again, in this example, this was an idea that was sent to me uh, to kind of look at a way of doing these bird blinds. So these kind of little uh, almost uh, piped pavilions as they kind of wrap around a space. They have these openings to allow for people of all ages and sizes to look out into the wildlife area. So it's got that. It's got the kind of, again, uh, standing area inside. Again, it's one of those things where it's a little more troublesome to try to do the doorway through the script, but once you actually bake this, you can start to just remove some of these pipes to actually create the opening. So it's one of those things where it's just gonna require a little bit of post-process uh, kind of design. But again, here's the example of this kind of idea that these are um, kind of wrapping around. There's a slight gap in between. In this case, they're using square. Again, it doesn't matter matter whether it's a circle or square. Both are pretty easy. The pipe's just a little bit easier to do rather than having to create all the domains for your square, but I can also show that option as well. But let's go ahead and again, kind of walk you through this. And again, what's good about this design is that it's very easy to adapt. It's very similar to other ones where we start off by kind of finding out the profile of our shape. Uh, we begin to create all our kind of random cutouts of those pipes. And then from there, we just start to actually uh, begin to create the pipes themselves. We do some reduction of some of those things. So um, you'll see how that all comes together and then just the kind of platform and railing on the inside. So again, let's go ahead and get started. What's again great about this is that I'm literally just starting with a single point in Rhino to start my circle. So I'm gonna go ahead and reference uh, that point. And I'm gonna make that the plane for my circles, All right? So uh, instead of, again, using a static uh, radius, we get to mess around with uh, having a variety of that. And that's, again, what we're going to use that graph mapper for. So yeah, I'm going to just shift this up. I'm going to use the range for my graph mapper. So again, I'll stick with something. It kind of depends on you. How many of these circles do you want? I'll start with something like 20. And then I'll just go ahead and create my graph mapper. In this case, um, I'm not even going to worry about the step size, so even though it's 24, it's going to give me technically 25, which doesn't really matter as long as I keep everything consistent. So in this case, I'm going to change my graph type to Bezier. And this is where, again, I'm kind of looking at this graph mapper as my side profile of my bird blind pavilion, so it kind of has this almost like an onion shape to it, right? Um, and then again, we can use this to multiply these values by whatever we think uh, they should be. So let's do something, uh, let's not do 10, just since I'm stuck with that, let's do something like 12 for now. Let's see how wide that makes it. So there's the multiplier. This becomes now the radius for several circles, right? So you kind of see that they're just uh, flat like that. But now we can actually begin to move these in their respective heights. So now I'm just going to do move. And I'm going to, I can for now just have them all going up the same interval. So I'm going to go to sets again, create series. That way I can actually change how much they go. Uh, so we'll start at zero, the step size. We can do something like 0.5 and just drag that up to there. Stick with that. So if we want, we can always mess with that as well. And then the count, we want that to be, again, the same thing, the same value as that. So I could just add an expression, or I could even just use the list length. So this, again, will give me a 25 value. So now you see, again, I'm getting 25 values. They're all going to go up a foot. I want to make sure that they do go up into the Z direction. Okay. 
And so there you go. So uh, that starts to give us that height. Maybe again, you wanna have this a little bit shorter. So maybe they're only half a foot. It's a little uh, better that way, I think. Let's turn this off. This is again, where you get to start to kind of play more so with that profile. We can have it kind of come in a little bit more. Maybe it gets even narrower at the top. You get to again, kind of have all sorts of flexibility of what that is. If you look at this as the actual side profile of this. So you can kind of have this almost vase shape to it, right? So it's a nice form in itself. And I mean, that's obviously something that you can apply to a lot of kind of designs to pretty easily create something like that. So the next thing we're gonna do is uh, kind of figure out our support system. So the main beams that are gonna go through this. So I'm gonna to go to curve and I'm going to divide this. And then I'm gonna determine how many posts I want essentially. So I'll stick with eight for now. And from here, what's cool is that if I go ahead and go to sets and flip this and go to curve and do, let's just do interpolated curve I can turn this off. So now you can see we've got those posts. And what I showed in the earlier example, if I uh, turn on the grid, we'll see just for now that it is slightly above the ground. So you might wanna actually have these posts both go down to the bottom as well as extrude up. So what we can do is basically kind of figure out whatever that distance is between uh, our initial point and these to kind of give us a uh, good estimate. It's not gonna be perfect because they are gonna be coming in at an angle, but regardless, we can do, uh, can use this curve, or sorry, we'll do it like this. So we'll take these curves, we'll find uh, we can use the point on curve here, drag them all the way down to the bottom, project to the plane, right? And that'll at least just give us a distance that we can measure. So vector, distance. And now what we want to do, and I'll just give myself a little more real estate over here, is take those curves and extend them. So I'll go to utility, extend curve. So all these, and I can go ahead and flatten these uh, now. It doesn't really matter. Um, we can see what type. We want it to line, arc, or smooth. I'll just keep it as a line for now. And then we get to determine both sides. So. I believe if I use this as my distance, that'll be in the downward direction. And if I just create this, this will, oops, no, it's the opposite. So this one goes into list. And then this one, you can kind of dictate like how much, if you want those to kind of extend beyond. So you'll see that these don't exactly reach at the bottom because they are at an angle instead of just perfectly straight. So something you could always do is just take that distance, maybe multiply it by two, right? Again, as long as like most likely this is gonna get put into a rendering, so you could always trim it off that way or extend it, but there you go. Um, the other thing I wanna do, so actually maybe I will go back to, uh, actually no, I should be okay. So let's actually do something else. So let's also kind of, instead of those all being uniform at the top, let's create uh, randomization. So this is something I uh, do every once in a while. If I go to my utility and use a gene pool, this just basically creates a, a group of sliders basically. And so I can use this to kind of find those random links. So I'm going to go to edit. I have eight of these. So there is a little bit of kind of a, it's not going to be as responsive. If you change the number of beams, you'll have to come in here and change it but I will kind of give it just one decimal. Maybe the minimum is 1.5, max is seven. Hit enter, hit okay. And then I can 
right click on this and say randomize 100%. Now I can drag that into there and you'll see that they're all kind of random. So maybe the max is a little bit lower than that. That's pretty extreme. Let's try something like four. All right, so now it's got that kind of condition too where it's kind of almost extending out to give it a little bit more kind of organic quality. And now from there, we can go ahead and pipe those. So I'm gonna to go to curve, or sorry, surface, pipe, give it a radius of like 0.5. So it's one foot thick, maybe that's way too thick. Let's try something even thinner, so half an inch. Um, actually for these, I do wanna keep these a little bit thinner because um, I want the other pipes to be a little bit thicker, but there we go. So now we start to get that. And again, what's cool is if you want, you can even select your point there and change the height and everything will be somewhat responsive to it, right? It's a little bit crazy when it gets really far, but I don't know, that's kind of interesting too in itself. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and drop that down to be a little bit lower again. So yeah, something like that. That seems like a good height for now. So there's our pipe. So now the, the fun part is taking all these curves and starting to fragment them in all sorts of interesting ways. So I basically want that the, the random kind of horizontal to still be supported by these. You'll see in that initial example, if I even turn on this layer, the older one, that um, that's a little hard to see now, but none of these were truly floating. They were actually always being supported by one of these vertical beams. So that's what we wanna make sure to do as well. And just by looking at that, I can see that this was way too, it's not nearly as wide as the last one. So I'm just gonna mess with that a little bit. So let's just bump that up. Maybe uh, they are a foot or something close to that. But anyways, uh, and then I'll just make that top a little bit thinner. So again, it's great because you can continuously change things around. But like I said, I want everything to kind of fragment from there and be supported by these beams. So I'm going to use this same divide component to give me those parameters to split these curves at. So I'm going to go to uh, curve, shatter. I'm going to use these as my curve to shatter and I'm going to actually go ahead and graph these as well. And then I'm going to use this parameter because you can see that this is dashed meaning it's um, already kind of branched into those data. So now you'll see that we have about 200 of these curves. They still look perfectly solid because they are in the sense they're just being fractured or broken at these uh, posts. So from here, this is where again, we're gonna begin to do some really crazy randomization of points on this. So what's good about it is there's something like this where we can put a point on a curve or you could have essentially multiple of those and have them all randomized by using the evaluate length. So I'm gonna use this as my curve. I want to evaluate them, probably not at zero or one at each one of those. You'll see if I just put in a random slider here, that if I have it at zero, it'll be all be on that side. If it's one, it'll be there. I want it to be somewhere in here because this is again gonna shatter those pipes somewhere between that. So I don't want them to be really short off of those pipes. I want them to have some what of an extent beyond that. So I'm going to create a, um, basically I'm going to ask to create a bunch of random lengths between something, uh, between a certain domain. So I'm going to go to sets, randomize. So this is the domain that I want to change. So I'm going to go to math, construct domain, and have that anywhere between something, like I said, between point Let's do 0.15 and 0.85, right? So 15 on either side. So you'll see that now that that creates um, one random number, I want there to at least be a minimum of uh, two. 
So we also want to even have a range too, right? Some might have two, some might have three. You'll see in the previous example how that gets done, right? So there's the random. In this case, I used, uh, this is my length, and then I create a random, uh, oops, sorry. So there's like randoms going into randoms, going into randoms, which is kind of uh, weird. But um, this is how you want to do it. So we have assortment of different numbers. That way each one has a slightly different one. Kind of doing this just to remind myself as well. Um, so I'm not just going to give it a fixed number. I'm going to use another set of random numbers. And again, this domain, I want to use the same length for my number. So length. is whatever this is. And then I want that to have an assortment of random values between one and two. So let's just get rid of these. One and two. So you'll see now I've got some are going to have one of these points, some are going to have two. Uh, that's how we start to control that. And then you'll also see that we have these um, variety of seed length. So the, again, I'm going to have a bunch of different options of how that gets kind of organized. So again, this is where it gets a little crazy and seems a bit chaotic, but it just kind of helps, again, give you a lot of different iterations and options. So I'm going to do something like 500. That way I just have a huge range of this. And again, we aren't going to see much until I start to mess with these. Um, if you want, like you would definitely want to keep that static. This might change. This will definitely change. And then again, I'm going to have each one of these have its own random seed too. So once again, we're going to copy and paste this random one. And in this case, we could again, you'll see that there's a lot of kind of range to that too. So I'm going to use um, the same length as the number, as well as the domain. So it's going to be anywhere between 0 to 264, whatever that length is, uh, that many. So each one has a unique random value. And then I also get to create a seed for that as well. So again, the length is going to be this one and this one. And then again, I'll use a large number slider. So now after we've done all this randomization, you'll see that we get all these kind of crazy functions. So if I drag that into there, we start to see where these points start to populate. You'll see that some of these curves have one, some have two. Let's see if we can find some of those, right? So it looks like a lot of them just have one. There might be something not quite working. So I can definitely see that some do have two. Let's just double check that it's all Correct, so two is my range that gets grafted, yep. So maybe I just have to kind of mess around. So it looks like it's all correct, right? Not sure why I only see one on each one of these lines. There should definitely be some that have two, right? Because I can even see that some of these have two. That is very strange. 
this again, make sure I'm doing that all correctly. So get shattered. It gets grafted then. So am I doing the right one? Oh, so there it is. So it gets shattered, right? So it's still, um, uh, grafted. In this case, I want to make sure I flatten it. Oh, cause that's the wrong, I was using the wrong length. That's why. That would help if I actually did it like this. So let's drag this into my length. Now this gets grafted. And now we can start to see two on several of these, right? So again, this is where you just want to make sure you're using the correct uh, length for that. You'll see now I've got um, 200. Again, for some reason, I only had 25 going in. So obviously not nearly enough. So I'm just going to shift this down, maybe shift this one up actually a little. That way I can give myself, this is definitely the more kind of complicated part of it because there's so much uh, randomization and you're using three of these to get there. And then we're still not kind of done with that random uh, component to this. So we've got these. So now we're going to again use these to once again fracture these. So I'm going to go again to curve, uh, shatter, so I'm taking these curves, I'll make sure to again graph them, so I have 200 of those, again there's a list of 200 so that's good, and again I'm not going to see much going on with those, they're just like in small pieces, but they're all connected, so this is where we want to start to Kind of randomly reduce these as well. So you'll see in the script that once I've uh, done that, so I'm going to use it again its length to determine um, if there's basically three of those kind of pieces because I don't want to remove it if there's only two. I want to use that to kind of actually remove a certain uh, uh, interval. So once you do that, then you can simplify it. So that way it's always kind of removing those middle ones. So again, let's go back to here. So here's my shattered components. Like I said, I want to make sure that if there's three of them that I get rid of this middle piece. So I'm going to go to sets, list, um, list length, and if the if it has three base three segments in here, I want to just focus on those ones. So this is not something you want to change. So I'll just use a static number, and then I'm going to go to sets list dispatch. Use this as my pattern, and again, you're not going to really see anything, but you are going to see that all these ones have three segments, right? There's just, they're still connected, but we want to take these and just go to sets, sequence, col, and index number, in this case, the middle one, which is in fact going to be list item one. So again, I'm not going to be changing this. I'll just use as a static number. And you'll see now after this, now there's starts to be that kind of missing piece that's been removed, which is great. And now we're going to take these, again, merge them back with this, the other pieces that are remaining that haven't been uh, touched. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go to uh, We can go ahead and actually flatten this. Oops, we don't want to flatten that part. Sorry, we'll flatten this part. We'll flatten this part. And now we can join these. So curve, 
that way it'll only join the ones that uh, uh, let's not even join let's just merge them together so um, we'll go ahead and go to sets tree merge so we're merging this one and these so now you'll see how it starts to kind of fill in a little bit more and now from these we can actually pipe them so I'm gonna go to surface pipe once more choose our radius for these so it's not nearly that big still way too thick let's try something around like Mm -hmm. kind of want these to be significantly thinner right so now we're starting to get there uh, we can make our other pipes a little bit wider now that are up here so there you go now we have our again kind of bird one you can again always kind of adjust these maybe again you want them to be a little bit uh, we could have multiple of them, so I'm going to make the spacing. Uh, let's have them a little bit tighter, but I'm going to have more of them, so I'm going to increase this value. So again, maybe something around 30. So there's the, again, pipes for that. That's looking pretty good. What I like about this is that if you're looking straight on in some areas, it's really kind of tight, like it's a perfect wall. But then at the top, you start to have kind of these gaps in between to kind of see, so it kind of polarizes it a little bit. So the last thing we want to do is again, kind of uh, select our floor to determine where we want that to be in relation to everything. So what we can do now is take our curves that are uh, kind of the foundation for this. I'm going to use sets, list item, and drag that all the way down there. And so we can start to use this to decide where do we want the floor in relation to everything else. So I'm just going to create a slider between 0 and I guess 15 if it wants to be really high, which is probably not ideal, but we can do that. And then I'm going to take this curve and also offset it and I want this to go in the negative direction so I'm going to do something like negative 10 less than 0 I probably don't want it to be offset that far so I'm gonna increase that to at least have some uh, width so 5 feet is a nice kind of space in between that and so now I can take those two curves and similar to other examples, I'm going to create a ruled surface from those two. All right, so now it's a nice solid curve. I can then extrude this in the Z disk direction, like half a foot. And then the last thing I might do is also add some railings so I can take that inside curve, which is there. Uh, divide it by a couple points. Let's do something smaller like five. And then we will, there's a couple ways we could do it. I'll just use the line SDL. Direction is going to be in the Z, and these could be like four feet high. And then I can even move this offsetted curve in that same height. So again, Z, the same length that I use for those curves. All right, so we can kind of start to see the wireframe of our hand railing in. Again, like everything else, we can start to uh, make give it some volume. So both the pipes 
for the hand railings can be super thin, so 0.15, I guess. Maybe even thinner if you want. And then the railing also has some thickness as well. Again, I'm just using the pipe because it's easier than having to create the rectangle, but it's definitely something you can do as well. But there you go. So now you have um, that part. And the reason I gave this um, portion a slider for my floors, that way if you want, maybe you want, you, maybe you don't want that to be perfectly flush. You could always kind of have that floor a little bit higher off the ground. So that way it kind of uh, goes underneath it as well. Um, so yeah. There you go. And then what I would recommend is once you're pretty happy with the profile, the thickness of everything, right? Like, again, it's somewhat still um, adjustable to not have too much lag. It's not processing a whole lot. It's really just that kind of randomization that gets a little uh, crazy and heavy on the processor. But once you do that, you can bake this onto their own layers. I'm going to turn it off. And again, this is where if you want to start to add doorways, you can just start to wherever that floor is, begin to manually remove some of these pipes, right? So you can kind of try to keep it as random as possible still so that it's just kind of a more organic looking opening. But it's definitely something to kind of uh, mess around with to give it that kind of quality, right? So there you go. Um, again, in this example, you'll see um, how much uh, variation you can start to create in a fairly simple uh, script. So.